what I'd like to do today, um, well, yawn first, I suppose. Uh, and then uh, we're going to go through some single read stuff that will actually apply for all of the single reads. Um, but I'd like to kind of, I made another one of those little info sheet things, like a little guide for you guys to have on the side. But I kind of wanted to get you guys involved with doing that too. Um, so I, I opened up the, the bio book. I took the excerpt for the clarinet and the woodwinds. That's on the left here. You can see I highlighted a bunch of like pertinent information. So I'll start pulling you guys through some of the easy stuff at the beginning of this. Um, and I'll ask for your input a little bit here and there too. Who, who plays a single read? Who's, who's clarinet in here? Anybody just do clarinet? I thought Caleb, oh, Caleb's not here. Um, saxophone, right? We had a bunch of those, yeah, okay. And then cost efficiency, they're, they're about $25. Sometimes, you, I mean, more music, I think it has them a little bit cheaper, maybe like 20, I believe. You might be able to get them for like 20 bucks, 30, 40, or more for, for a good, so yeah. <laughs> Some of you guys are, are nodding, like, yeah, they, they get pretty pricey. But um, usually students can get away with a box of 10 for like 20, 25. How long would you guys say that that lasts for a single read player? It's like a box of reads, how, much will, how long will that get you through? A month for 10? Okay, yeah, well. Yeah, a good while, right? What do you think, Chris? I was going to say, like, when they don't have to down as much. Yeah. And so they don't want to okay, yeah. So a box will get you through probably at least a semester, I would say. If, especially if they're good reads, quote unquote good reads, which you won't really know until you buy them. Well, I don't know. If, if you guys see, again, I'd like you to kind of see how I do this so that we can kind of fill in this, this single reads section on the right here. This is kind of like a notes thing, and I wanted to kind of build that with you guys. So if there's anything here that you're like, we should definitely put that in here, especially people who are not familiar with the single reads, vocalists, string players, all those things. If it's like, that I'm going to forget. Let us know, and we'll put that into the notes as well. Okay, these are like the essentials on the right here, but I do want you guys to come up with like, okay, that's a good detail that will come in handy for me. Okay, so you guys can kind of just jump in and, and be like, wait, 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 can we put that in the notes? Okay. Uh, you're welcome to take notes yourself if you'd like. I figure this will be kind of a collective way to do that. Brandon, can you be our, our demonstrator one more time? Can you pop the mouthpiece off? You can take the small piece, too. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, good to know, especially for high school kids, right? That's kind of delicate for young kids to, to be doing, but, but that is a good... Those are all good options to have in your, in your back pocket. There are two types of ligatures. Uh, there are the regular ones, which I believe all the clarinets have, right? Uh, with the two screws that go underneath on the... Can you guys just hold those up so everybody can see and make sure that they see what it looks like? There's two screws going on the side there. And again, the screws are always facing to the right, okay? If we turned it upside down, the screws would be facing to the left, okay? Or if uh, we put it on the wrong way, it would be facing to the left, yeah. And if you put the wrong end like that, you'll notice immediately it just won't fit. Yeah, it won't go on. Um, okay, wow, that was actually really, really fast. Okay, cool, guys. Uh, does everybody see how I'm doing this and why I'm doing it this way when I'm going through, right? I'm just kind of highlighting key points, key words. So is there anything that we were talking about? Um, nobody really jumped in for me, which I understand, but uh, is there anything that you think we should add to this portion of the list here for single reads that's really important that's not listed here? Yeah, warping. Okay, so can you tell me, uh, well, oh man, PC, okay. So for warping, what is some important information put in here? Yeah, can you explain that again for us, Sam? Yeah. Um, Good. good question, guys. Thanks for the clarifiers. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's good. Again, I think that would probably apply more to high school. I just feel like middle schoolers would be like, oh, I don't know, and kind of, you know, chip a bunch of reads doing that, but maybe not, maybe not. Uh, again, this all depends on how much you're able to habituate these things for the kids, okay? If you're doing it every single day, which they do need to see every single day, they need to know exactly what their three to five steps of setting up their instrument is, and they need to do those repetitions in your presence so that they're not building the bad habits. It goes a long way. So, uh, real quick, and then I want to get to Chris. Um, that can go awry, because um, if you're leaving that in your case, especially, then you're also going to be dehumidifying the pads, which we don't really want. We want those to be nice and um, lubricated with, with the, the oils that are in the pads as well. Same thing with the reeds. It can overdry them. So just... Yeah, the instrument pads, the key pads, like on the keys. I have a case for Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. That's a great idea. I like the writing idea. That's a good one. Like a Sharpie or something? Yeah. And can you tell us why that's so important to rotate them like that? Okay, yeah. Good, good to, to teach them to kind of get in their brains as they're going, because, I mean, a lot of kids will just use the same read until it's literally falling apart. Um, okay, we'll stop there, I think. It's about 9.30. Um, we'll kind of fill this in a little bit more, and when we're done with the clarinet section, I'll forward this, all of this information to you guys, okay? Um, I do want you to go through the book and kind of look at these sections yourself and do the kinds of things. You can see how much of this is actually not really highlighted, right? Um, just a little, mostly the key pieces of information. That's really, you guys got to get good at doing this kind of thing, especially when you're in the band room. Like, you're not going to have time to sit down and read 100 pages, so you got to be able to pinpoint the, the really useful information quickly, okay? Um, we did have a couple of uh, playing by road exercises, so we're going to kind of shift into that right now, okay? So if you guys could warm up for me, uh, get your, your reads. Yeah, I see Chris kind of adjusting there. All right. We're going to play a couple of tunes by road. So um, I would say practice uh, F major scale. Just get used to those fingerings. Make sure you got everything under your fingers, okay? Give you about two minutes. All right, let's finish up that last thought, guys. We'll kind of bring it back. Everybody good? good. Think they found stuff? Okay, good. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's run it down. So I'm gonna show you guys how I kind of do this. Okay, this is very important for when we're trying to put these together on the fly. So let's start with our Juno's group over there. Give me a couple of things about uh, amateur and performance testing, please. What do you think? Okay, great. 
and, yeah. So we're thinking straight, right? And then the air ends up going down. Anything you want to add? Or? Good. Very good. I like that. And that kind of goes um, across the board, right? So we'll put, uh, don't lean into it. <laughs> and again, I'm going to send it to this to you guys. You can kind of edit it to make it more concise or more applicable to what you think and anything that kind of jogs your memory. That's really what we're looking for here. So we want this boom, boom, boom. Bottom lip curled, cheeks against the teeth, straight, fast air, bringing the instrument to you, right? So you can kind of fire these off in your class and everybody makes those habits, okay? These are, these are the important habits. Good. I'll just add one more to okay. the mouthpiece. Okay, yes. Teeth on Top teeth in particular, right? Top teeth, Top teeth on mouthpiece. Perfect. See how nice this, this lays out, right? And then we can kind of have a checklist, which they talk about a little bit later in the bio book, to kind of have the kids going through these uh, rituals, these, these habitual things every morning or every day when you try to do this. Okay, let's do a uh, group in the corner there, Kyle group. What you got for us? Plenty of court grease so that it's easy to do, right? Yeah. How about um, non-single read players? Chris and Missy, you guys have anything that you noticed that were? Perfect. And why do we want to do that? Perfect. And along those lines, actually, I'm going to add one more. Um, when we're grabbing any instrument, any instrument, really, but we don't want to grab the keys in the book, actually. Uh, where's the young lady who's trying to assemble or disassemble? Where are we? Here we go. This one right here, I marked in red. You can see here. Because I'm, I'm not crazy about this left hand. It's just too... You're gripping all the keys. So if you can grab where there's not any bars or any keys, that's always the best way to go. For the same reason, as Chris was saying, we can, we can bend them very easily. Okay? Um, try not to grab bars and keys. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. Let's try the next group in the front here. Chris's group for tone and embouchure, please. What you got? Perfect. So like one of those uh, ritual checklists that we were talking about, right? What page is that on? 66. Okay, thank you. And non-single read players, anything else that you noticed that you think is essential that you didn't know? I mean, because sometimes when, if we're like, if we play the instrument, it's like, oh, right, I don't even think to do that because it's so natural to me, right? But we want to be able to put those, habit, those good habits in place. So if you guys got nothing else, those are all really good. Okay. Uh, is there a separate checklist for that, or? 68, thank you. Okay, perfect. Very efficient, too, guys. Very good. Okay. Uh, like a hit? Yeah, H-I-H. H-I-H. Thank you. Okay. That is quite a bit. I'm trying my best to kind of synthesize it and put it in there, but uh, I think those are the key parts. Can you give me one last piece? Maybe, maybe one of the non-single read players. That, that's excellent. Thank you for all that information. Um, something that'll kind of jog you guys' memory versus the, in the TIV versus HIT thing. What, what, what did you guys pull away from that? Again, Sam's pretty used to doing all this, so what, what, what do you guys think? Okay, good. Having trouble with coordination. Something to that effect. Okay. Okay. Does it make it sense how I'm writing this out for everybody? Again, you can, you can edit it when I send it to you guys. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you for that. Okay, very good. It's important. What else you got? Give me one more, maybe, and then we're going to have to jump into play. Anybody else got one? Thank you. Good. So, uh, pulling the barrel and... Um, I guess in adjusting the barrel too, right? But we want it to start with an eighth of an inch. Everybody kind of jams it all the way in there. That's not what we want. You're going to be pretty sharp if we do that. Okay. All right, cool. Excellent job, guys. I will send this to you, okay? And uh, let's transition into playing now.